welcome to the Boomer Briefing Podcast, where we help you solve a critical business issue in 20 minutes or less. I'm your host, John Hubbard, Director at Boomer Consulting, and with me today is Gary Boomer. Gary is the founder, visionary, and stratus and strategist of Boomer Consulting. So Gary, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Just call me Dot Connector. I prefer are- that anyway. You are the dot connector here at Boomer Consulting and in the profession. So our topic today is how to think about your business model. So this is a really big conversation that we're having with firms today. But Gary, let's just start with the big question here. Why is it important for firms to rethink and reevaluate their business model today? Well, John, I think the pandemic, for one, has certainly caused us to think about that. But this is not something new. Uh, A pandemic or a disruption uh, rarely just brings, it generally brings things to the forefront. So the question that I think firms should be asking right now is, um, how can we add value in today's environment? That's the same question they should have been asking six months or two years ago. And I know many of the managing partners in larger firms and even smaller firms have been asking themselves this question, but it's become more urgent. And there is a sense of urgency in the market market today. But many things are changing and have already changed. Firms are being disrupted not only by the pandemic, but they're already uh, being disrupted by technology, new service requests from clients, talent requirements, processes, and even how do we grow the firm uh, organically as well as just from mergers. Uh, And this really requires visionary leadership and perhaps even a change in their value proposition. Uh, And just to make this relevant, hours times dollars is not a business model for the future. And I've really said that for the past 20 some years because I've been so heavily invested in how technology is playing a role in our profession. Right. So as firms look to um, grow the types of services they offer, right, in the area of um, advisory and even more so in in consulting, I think what we're seeing is that their current business model, how they package price, create that revenue or um, create that value you were mentioning is not able to keep up with the services that they need to actually be delivering. Do you agree with that? Uh, I definitely agree with that. So, yeah so that that leads me to our second question here is all right so you um have a firm listening here that's saying yep there are higher level services we need to be offering Uh, maybe they have some of those services in mind and they know they know they need to evolve their business model uh, maybe package differently price you know differently what are some of the solutions and recommendations you would give a firm that's listening that is wanting to evolve their business model? Well, John, I think, first of all, we kind of need to discuss some of the components of a business model, because I think most people feel, or most CPAs feel that a business model is a pricing strategy. But Mm -hmm. there are other factors. Uh, For example, are you going to be in a mass market a delivery system or a niche market? What channels are you going to employ to deliver this service? Are you going to have offices? Are you going to do it through a website? Are you going to have a sales team involved? These are all important questions. And it's not like a startup here. That's the good news. You already have a marketing channel. So you have relationships. Now, most of those relationships were in a physical world in the past. Now we're in a virtual world or a hybrid model. So where does your revenue come from? Does it come from transactional services? Does it come from compliance, advisory, or consulting? Mm -hmm. And my take is that it's going to come from all, 
So how do you position those to benefit the firm the most? So transactional revenues have always been looked at differently than recurring revenues. And that's why when I started in the profession, people loved audit engagements because mm -hmm. they might be 10, 20 years. Now those can change uh, every year. Uh, it's not unusual. So the hot topic right now that people are discussing is the subscription model. And, and I think it's a great model, but it requires different things than what we've had in the past. It requires the ability to package and price multiple services. You have to have marketing capabilities and sales skills within the firm. And I, I think many firms uh, say we have a marketing department, we have sales, the partners are involved in sales, but yet they really haven't been trained or they don't have a standard sales process. So one of the biggest questions firms must answer is do we have too many small clients uh, today? For example, uh, do we do too many 1040s under $1,000? And having the right clients is critical to any business model. And this also requires physical, human, and intellectual capital. So most firms have physical facilities. Question is, what are you going to need in the future there? Do you have the skill set in your human capital? Do you have the intellectual capital that you need? And my proposition here is, in fact, sometimes less can be more. Mm -hmm. And by that, let's ask another question. Um, what are your key activities? Uh, that's part of the business model. And some would say, well, we're really problem solvers. And, and that's where you get into the audit and the compliance work. But I say you have production issues and you have technology, a platform today, and then you're gonna have par partnerships and alliances. Many of the larger firms are sourcing. I think that's good. Uh, so most fir firms I would agree today are focus on problem solving. Uh, finally, what's your cost structure as a firm? Are you cost driven or are you value driven? And I think we know many firms have been cost driven. They've just been selling hours. So how do you become a, a value driven firm? And that leads us to an important part that you're kind of an expert in is what's your story? Uh, and, and I will tell you, I've learned from you that the client's the hero uh, and you as a CPA are the guide and you really provide the path to success. And this is a different story than most firms have communicated in the past. And there's a good chance that most firms' websites need to be updated with more focus on the client and less on personal bios. Right. Now that's quite a little to digest there, but uh, those are some of the things that we're considering. No, I think that's spot on, Gary. And you're right, there's a lot you packed in there. Um, and one thing I wanna unpack a little bit for the listeners is you mentioned um, kind of the function of sales for business development in firms. And that has largely been an area where firms have not prioritized enough. And I think one key role that firms should really be um, actually having in their firm today is the role that we call the business development quarterback. So some of the listeners here may have a, a business development leader in your firm, especially if you're a larger firm, you um, might have that role there. But really, you, you probably need another role to supplement that. And it's someone that wakes up every morning and is actually thinking about the business model of the firm, thinking about the fact that services are currently being priced inconsistently across the firm. The fact that there are services that could be packaged with other services in the firm that are not being packaged that way. And, I, you know, I was talking with a firm the other day and they said it's really common 
to have multiple people in their firm talking with multiple people from a, from a client and no one knows those conversations are happening, you know, are kind of happening there. So the left hand doesn't even know what the right hand is doing. And so I think a key, um, one of the key takeaways from your answer, Gary, is having that type of role in a firm to really help connect the dots internally as it pertains to business development. And something you say often, which I really appreciate, is it's the who, not how. You find the right who to help solve that problem, and they're going to figure out the how. We spend a lot of time trying to figure out the how and never thinking about who can we bring in um, or who can we put in this role that can really help us move forward in that area. So um, great stuff there. So let's go to the, let's go to the third question I have for you, Gary, is um, let's say someone does actually implement that business development quarterback role, or if someone does kind of um, get their pricing and, you know, and their packaging tightened up, more consistent, what type of results should they be expecting that if they get their business model figured out, they evolve it to keep up with the demands and the needs of the clients? What type of, of benefits and successes are they going to experience? Well, here's where the great news comes in, John. You, you mentioned uh, uh, unique ability teams. You may not have called them that, but we're in a team sport today. And we're trying to deliver multiple services. And one of the changes firms have to make is get away from this rugged individualist approach because the service lines are too broad that the clients needs. So it really takes a team. Uh, and when you do that, you'll have more diversity of your skills. And uh, you'll probably have fewer clients who are purchasing multiple services, which one makes them stickier to the wallet share increases. And so you can anticipate uh, that your profitability and your cash flow is gonna improve. And this focusing on marketing, I believe the messaging needs to go from the compliance and transactional services to the advisory and consulting services, which clients both need and want and there's a difference between needs and wants, by the way. But uh, the, the important thing here is that as you start your message with advisory and compliance services, naturally the compliance and transactional services come your way. So I think other improvements you're going to see other than cash flow, uh, increased profits, larger clients, more referrals, and sustainable growth. But Lastly, and I think maybe most importantly for the long term, is you're going to see more innovation and value creation. And that's what people are really trying to do today. And that's hard because most innovation requires disruption of the incumbent. Mm -hmm. And you may be changing processes for people, new technology, uh, you're probably not replacing people, but you're changing their jobs and their responsibilities. So this is where the challenge comes in. Yes, and one of the best you know, uh, ways to have an innovative culture, at least from what we've seen in firms, is implementing some of the business model um, tweaks you've been, you've been talking about. Because if you have your business model set up this way, that means you're having the conversations, the right conversations with clients and all of your best ideas will most often come from clients in terms of the conversations you're having with them. And so you never have to create a new service from scratch again, you know, sitting in a conference room by yourself. If you're having the right conversations with clients, they're going to be telling you what you need to be doing and, and they're going to pay for it right, you know, right out of the gate. So I love that, Gary. So we've talked about um, we've talked about the business model as it pertains to an accounting firm. But speak to me, Gary, about where do you see opportunities around this thinking beyond just the accounting profession? 
Well, John, it's happening in all professions, medicine. Uh, you know, my watch here, mm -hmm. I can uh, do multiple tests, blood pressure, all the vitals virtually on my watch today. So it's impacting testing in the medical profession. But it's even technology is disrupting the clergy. And, and you wouldn't think of the clergy here as being disrupted, but it's really happening. But I think the good news for people to think about is as you're disrupted and solve these problems, you're the most trusted business advisor. And once you learn how to improve your business model, then you have the skills to help their clients. And that's what they want from you today. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the technical tax and financial reporting they want, but they do want uh, you're helping them transform so they can sustain growth and success. No, nope, that's great. And that is spot on. So we've had a pretty well-rounded conversation on how firms need to be thinking about their business model, why it's important for their future growth, why it's important for their future success. Some of the benefits they are going to be receiving by kind of, rethinking their business model a bit. Um, for those listening, what's kind of the um, one or two kind of big next steps someone could take to, to start to improve their business model? Well, I would say it takes some thinking and it, I would suggest you run your numbers through our model for the future or build your own model. Um, Accountants are data driven and they have to see their numbers in a model before they believe it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the big challenge here is mindset of how to change. The tool sets and the skill sets are available, available in the market today. Uh, so this requires time to think, plan and grow. That's kind of a tagline we've had over the years. Um, you're not a startup, as I said early on, but you need to think more like a startup in some times or in times like this. Mm -hmm. So find a business model that's profitable and sustainable. Well, the good news is you already have one, but it may not be sustainable and as profitable going into the future. So a pivot strategy may be appropriate in these pandemic times. Uh, so you have to know your economic engine and you may have multiple economic engines in your firm, but I believe from a marketing and success standpoint, you really have to focus and probably focusing on one is the best advice I can give you. So too many, fo too many firms right now are focused on too many engines and they're not applying the appropriate metrics. Let me give you some examples of two metrics that I've grown up with and heard at practice management conferences for 30 years, uh, realization and utilize, utilization. I believe they're outdated metrics. A more appropriate metric is revenue per full-time equivalent. And the other thing that I was told when I came into the profession is time is money. Time is not value. Value is determined by the client or the customer. So requirements in the new business model that we haven't had in our old business model, skills in project management, data analytics, marketing, sales, and I think external alliances. You don't have to control everything inside the firm. So other important steps I think to take or talk to your clients what are their dangers, opportunities, and strengths? They'll have plenty, but get them to focus only on the top three. Uh, and then create this culture of innovation within your organization. Um, and innovation is much different than optimization. And I think we've seen uh, firms really focus on optimization over the past 20 years, not innovation, but we have to have more innovation in the profession today. Right. All right, Gary, that is all good stuff. One thing you mentioned um, there um, at the beginning was kind of 
running your numbers through kind of the business model tool we have here at Boomer. So for those listening, for those watching, if you're, if you're interested in seeing how your numbers kind of stack up through our business model, go, go to boomer.com and you will see a contact form there. You can simply fill out that form and uh, let us know you'd be interested in seeing that business model. And we'd, we'd love to have a conversation with you around that. Gary, that brings us to our time. Again, thanks so much for making time um, for this conversation. It is one that is really needed in our profession today. So thanks for joining me on the podcast. It was my pleasure. Great topic. And as always, enjoyable to discuss this with you. All right. Thanks, Gary.